seek the Lord, he'll get it done. He will get it done for you. And it's, and it's without sweat. And every time he does that, it makes me think, well, you know, I really shouldn't get nervous. That, that's not that big a deal, but it is kind of a big deal if you don't have people to work. And so, uh, but I, I will just say, no matter what it is, if you, if you say, Lord, I, I trust you and I give this over to you. The Lord is always faithful. And he has supernatural, he's, he is God, amen? <laughs> and so if you can, but if you, if you do, if you're persuaded he can do it, then you'll give him that, that level of trust. But then other things are harder to trust him with. Uh, Mike was talking Wednesday night about when Christy had her, so I get a text that, okay, they've lifelined Christy to Indianapolis, and so the report is she's got an aneurysm and she's got a brain bleed. And so Mike said, you know, I could trust him. So I'm leaving Virginia and driving all night. And so I said, so he prays, Lord, I'm trusting you that you will keep the highways as I'm driving too fast probably from Virginia to Indiana. You will keep the highway free of deer. And he said, I could trust the Lord for that. But he said, as I was writing, I could not trust the Lord with the life of my wife. See, I could trust him that he's, no matter, you know, th that he's going to keep the deer out of the road. But see, uh, Christy means more to him, see. And so should I take something that means that much to me and now, okay, Lord, I turn it over to you. It's harder to do. It's harder to do because... Uh, because it, it uh, we don't want to lose control. When we, when we, so, okay, if I turn it over to you, Lord, what, what if, uh, now what am I going to do? Well, you turn it over to him, and you start praising him and thanking him that he loves Christy more than, that Jesus loves Christy more than he does. Yeah. And he made her. And he, so, so, it's, so there's all different levels of trust. But I pray we trust him for everything. I pray before you leave this house today, whatever you haven't trusted him with, you, you, you give it to him today. You roll it over to him today. Okay, Lord, I've never trusted you with this, but today, it's, it's hands off for me. Today, it's, I give it to you. Amen? I mean, Josh watches uh, wrestling three times a week. Our, our whole lives are dominated by Monday, 8 to 11, WWE, and then Tuesday, 8 to 10, WWE, and then Thursday, 8 to 10, what's an impact wrestling? So uh, everything's got to, every, all of our planning has got to revolve around that because he knows, he cannot tell time, but he knows exactly 8 o'clock Tuesday, or Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. He has this sense in him. He's going, what, Josh? Okay, it's 8 o'clock. You know, we got other things we got to do sometimes. So we have to go home and watch it. But they'll, every, every show, they'll have a tag team. Amen? Now, is this stuff fake or is this real wrestling? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, they have a tag team. And the thing is, so if, so if who's ever, whoever tags the other person, then the other person's got to get out of the ring. Right? And that's the way it is with the Lord. If you're going to turn it over to him, if you're going to tag him and say, okay, Lord, I give this to you, then you have to get out of the ring. And you have to say, okay, Lord, I, I turn this issue over to you. It 
It could be anything. It could be your wife. It could be your fear. It could be <laughs> the safety of your children. It could be a, a child that's going absolutely the wrong way. And, you, and the, yet when you trust the Lord, you have to, if, if he's going to come in and fight your battles, you have to get out of the ring. Or God declares it's illegal. Because either I'm going to do it or you're going to do it. Amen? But I pray today, whatever you haven't turned over to him, today you turn it over to him. And you say, well, when? Well, go ahead and do it now just in case you forget later. Okay, so whatever is up and stirring in your spirit right now, turn it over to him. Say, here, 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 Lord, here's my wife. Here's my child. Here's my business. Here, here's uh, the church. Here's my health, Lord. In Jesus' name, I turn it over to you, Lord. And the Lord says, praise God, that's what I've been wanting for a long time. Now I can get in there and do some whooping up on some people. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. We try to figure it out. We, we try to think, okay, well, what's going to happen here? Don't lean on your own understanding. Just trust the Lord. He's the creator of all things. He made your brain. He made your body. He, he knows the numbers of hairs on your head, and he knows the planets that he's created. He, he is able. God is able. Say, God is able. God is able. If he made the universe, he can handle your situation. Amen? Amen? But he will never take it from you. It's always fine. The Lord will never make anybody get saved. You have to say, okay, Lord, save me. Although the price is fully paid, he will never take your worry or your concerns unless you say, Lord, take this burden off of me. In Jesus' name, take it, Lord. And I relinquish it to you. Not today, forever. It's your issue now, Lord. And I'm going to tell you, when he begins to move in supernatural power in that situation, you'll see things change that could never change with your worrying and your fretting and your browbeating the Lord says, I'll change him, and I'll change him from the inside out in Jesus' Amen. name. And I'll give him a heart for me. And now they're gonna now they're gonna walk down those streets of gold. Amen? Amen. Praise God. In all your ways acknowledge him, and then he will direct your path. The Lord will give He will give you light in your path, and then those things that you dare not turn over to him before, when you turn it over to him, now he says, This is the way, walk in it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then uh, Romans 8, 28, I think I've already quoted. But I just, you need to know this. And then no matter what it looks like, no matter how bad it looks, <laughs> no matter what the circumstances, all things work together for the good for those that love God and are the called according to his purpose. Whenever you say, here it is, Lord, I turn my marriage over to you, I turn my children over to you, you know, whatever it is, when you do that, he said, it may, you, there may be incredible confusion to begin with, apparent confusion. But the Lord's cleaning out the rat's nest. He's cleaning out the things that make you worry. He's cleaning out the things that make you fret. Amen? Amen. I mean, you know, I mean we're, we're getting ready. To leave. We're leaving for Hilton Head as soon as we walk out of here today. And uh, Kathy gets so frazzled. I mean, I was pretty frazzled, too, because you crammed two weeks. What do you mean? You, you saying you're not frazzled? Do what? Because you should turn it over to the Lord. But anyway, so, so last night, Jada's going to ride down with us. And so I said, well, you know, rather than us going all the way to Amanda's farm, why don't you text Amanda and, and tell her, you know, to, to bring Jada into town so we don't have to go to the farm. And, and so, so she gets up this morning and she said, I texted Bree last night and said, would you please bring Jada to church with me? And she said, well, I just had my gallbladder taken out Friday, and I, I really wasn't planning on coming to church, you know? <laughs> That's what you do when you get frazzled. That's what you do when you get beside yourself. You text the wrong people and have them bring... I, can you imagine what Bree was thinking? I mean, she's got this little baby... She just had her gallbladder out. 
she had a colonoscopy, uh, which I don't know if she wants anybody to tell me. I won't say you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> she, she had that Monday. And so then, and then Kathy's texted her, hey, when you come to church, bring Jada with you. Sure. What a demanding bunch of people. <laughs> but all things do work together. If you just say, Lord, I turn it over to you, and then look, how do you know when you trust in the Lord? You're in rest. You're not in anxiety. You're not in fear. You're in rest because you know the Lord has it. He, you've already turned it over to him. It's his, it's his deal now. Now, if you take it back, you're going to have all kinds of stress. But if you just say, Lord, I've turned this over to you, I know you can work together all things for the good in this, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. He's a great God. But the more value that you do have on something, the, the tougher it is. But I will say this, your trust level will determine, the, the, the level you're willing to trust God in any area of your life will determine your spiritual altitude, okay? So if you trust him more, he'll, he'll bring you higher in things, in, in, in seeing things, in opportunities. Um, you know, Penny's just been amazed. Since Frank went to heaven, God's given her a new boldness, and, uh, and she's just really, really doing a lot of witnessing not, not pre-planned, not going out just in daily, just daily, just daily confrontations with, not confrontations, <laughs> uh, communications with people. People will bring up spiritual things and she'll just say, you know. I mean, she was at the courthouse the other day and this guy goes, well, she said, are you, are, where are you going to church? He goes, well, I don't go to church anymore. I'm not really living the life. And she goes, well, you know one thing? The only thing that's going to matter one of these days is where are you at with Jesus? That guy went, hmm, you know. But, you know, who knows what good that'll do. Amen? Amen. But, 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 but it, now that, and I told Penny yesterday, you know, Frank is totally quickened. Frank, it, the Bible says this, we will know even as we're known. We will know even as we're known. And anybody that believes in Jesus and now they're with the Lord, now they're not seeing through a glass dimly, now they're, they know even as we're known. And so they know everything. Praise the Lord. They are there's them. Praise God. And, and when the Bible talks about us being surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, those people are saying, come on, believe it all. Come on, you're more powerful. You're sons of God. You don't have to tippy-toe around. We love everybody. We want to be good to everybody. But I'm going to tell you, it would not be right for you to know somebody was going to be separated from God forever in incredible torment and not to say to them, you know, what really matters is why don't you give your life to the Lord and why don't you walk with him? We all have faults. We all, we all fall short, but the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all unrighteousness and we've been empowered by the spirit of the most high God. Right. Amen. 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 We've got the power of God inside of us. And we have a right to speak into situations with the word of God and they will come into alignment. If you believe, they will come into alignment. How much do you trust God? Do you trust God enough to speak his word into situations and watch them begin to line up whereby the glory of God and the reign of God yeah. is falling yeah. in these situations where it was parched and barren and dry and now you're speaking life into it and the resurrection power of Jesus has transformed your relationship with a person or where they're headed or what's going on in their life and now you're not, you're not foggy and you're not disoriented but you're quickened in the spirit of God and you cannot help but trust him. I trust you, Lord. I don't understand this, but I trust you, Lord. Amen? There's a lot of things we don't understand. One of these days we'll understand. But the main thing is, Jesus said this, when I come to the earth, will I find faith in the earth? I pray he finds it in you. I pray he finds it in you. I pray he finds it in you. I pray he, he sees you not being able to be shaken, not because you're strong in the flesh, but because you trust him with all your heart. I don't understand everything, but I know this, Lord. At the end of the day, all things work together for the good. So this must going to be worked together for my good, too, yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust you. I trust you, Lord. 
I trust you with my life. I trust you with my heart. I trust you with everything. Amen? Praise the Lord. And then Mark 10. There's great reward in this life. How many are saved in the house? How many have given your life to the Lord? I want you to know there are benefits in this life. Huge benefits in this life. And if you're not, if you're not receiving those, you are living less than God wants you to live now because it's all paid for and it's all done. God's not going to do anything new. It's already done. He's, uh, Jesus has already risen from the dead. The devil's power has been broken. And if you don't believe the devil, he said everything is finished. And, the, and if you trust me and you have faith in me, you can bring it down into your life now. Amen? Amen? Amen. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brother. See, when you give your trust to him, what you're doing is saying, Lord, I'm going to keep working, but now I work for you, and I trust the results for you. It doesn't mean you're going to go home and just quit and not do anything. God is an active God. The Holy Ghost is always moving. God is an active God. He doesn't expect us to sit down. He expects us to be busy for Him. Yeah. But the results and the reaping of the benefits now come from Him and not from our own labor. Amen? Amen. But you have to switch that off. You have to say, okay, Lord, the business is yours. In Jesus' name. My marriage is yours. In Jesus' name. My relationships are yours. In Jesus' name. Surely I say that there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake or for the gospel's sake. Do I have another one? Who shall not receive a hundredfold. Say hundredfold. hundredfold. That means a hundred times. He said you're going to receive a hundred. That doesn't mean you're going to receive a hundred wives. We're not, you know, we're not... He just says, I'm going to enhance your marriage a hundredfold. Your marriage is going to be so incredible that you're not going to be able to believe it. Amen. Now, Kathy already sees that from this side, but God says, Dwight, I'm going to show you from this side too. I'm going to give it to you. Because she gets up and she says, I'm the luckiest woman on earth. She's like skipping down the hallway every day. I said, praise God. <laughs> Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? A hundredfold, houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, lands, lands. God said, if you turn your business over to me, I'm going to bless it a hundredfold. Amen. Yeah, you've worried and you've fretted and you, you try to do everything. You try to keep your hands on everything. Turn it over to me. You keep doing the same thing. I'll give you supernatural enlightenment, plus I will bless it a hundredfold. Amen. Amen. If you want to be prosperous, give it to God. If you, if you want to keep struggling and worrying about it or wringing your hands, you keep doing it. But, but you're only going to eke out just a little bit. But if you turn it over to the Lord, he says, I'm going to open the heavens. I'm going to pour you out a blessing you cannot contain. Amen? Amen. Amen. With persecutions. There is a certain amount of persecutions because now the God of this world, which this kingdom, the kingdom of darkness is teetering, <laughs> ready to fall. Do you know that? You know the kingdom of this world is in serious, serious trouble because the kingdom of God is here. We're in the kingdom of God. We're citizens of God. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. This world system is shaking. Our, our kingdom will never shake. Amen. So whenever you really trust the Lord, you don't have to worry about future earthquakes because God's kingdom cannot be shaken. And then when you trust him with that, praise the Lord. Now you can have peace, and your prosperity is not just for a season. Your prosperity is forever. And there are persecutions because the enemy goes, that guy is trusting you. He's telling people he's trusting you. Well, then the persecutions come. But all they're trying to do is to move you off your level of faith and trust. Whereby, should I be worrying? No, the Lord has it. Amen? Amen. That's what the, the persecutions and fears that come to you are to bring you into doubt and unbelief. Yep. To whereby now, well, yeah, I, I believe that and I trust the Lord with that, but it's not looking like it right now. So mm -hmm. should I stay the course? And the Lord said, absolutely. If you, if you want divine assistance and if you want divine 
access of the powers of God in your life, stay connected to me with faith and trust. Because when you cut it off now, it's back to you again. And it's back to your efforts. But the Lord doesn't want that. That's what persecutions are about. They can't, they can't have an effect on the reality that Jesus has risen from the dead. Amen. And every weapon formed against you shall not prosper. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you think, well, it looks like some of these weapons are prospering. They are not prospering. It looks like it, but we walk by faith, not by sight. And we hang in with the Lord in trust. And the Lord says, I'll deal with your enemies. Amen. I will deal with the enemies of your soul. I will deal with the spirit of fear. There's a spirit of fear that just hangs around certain families, certain houses, certain people, certain dogs. There's, just, there's a spirit of fear that hangs on. And the Lord says, I want you free of that in Jesus' name. I want you. There's, there's an easy access into fear, into the fear-free zone, and that's trusting me and refusing to blink, refusing to stagger, but staying in me and saying, I trust you with my heart. I'm going to tell you the power of the Holy Spirit resides there. Amen. There's no fear in heaven. There's only fear and persecution on the earth against the children of God, and you can say, not me in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And then, so then here we get a hundredfold here, in the earth realm and then in the age to come into that which awaits us where, where so many of our loved ones have already who believe in Jesus who trusted Jesus last words out of my grandpa's mouth all the his one child and the five grandkids are around him and his wife he says believe in God believe in God last breath he's gone Next second, he's in the glory of God. He's in the age to come, and he is in eternal life, and he'll never come out of eternal life. Well, let me tell you this. Eternal life is already in you. You will never come out of eternal life. Eternal life has already been shut up into your earthen vessel. It's the excellence of God inside of you, and you cannot die. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It makes you be bold, and it makes you want to live, and it makes you want to get up, and it makes you want to say, praise God, I serve the only true and living God. And I don't have to fear, and I don't have to worry. Amen. Thank you. Be strong and of a good courage. Yeah. Be strong and of a good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord is with you Amen. everywhere you go. And, and, and just... He is with you. That's not, that's not positive thinking. The Lord is with you everywhere you go. But, you know, you, you, if, you, you need to act like a son of God. They don't, they don't elevate children to thrones. They, 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 they elevate sons, grown sons, to sit on the throne of God. And God said, the throne is yours to sit on. But you've got to quit acting like you're five years old. You got to quit. Every time, every time there's a clap of thunder, you got to quit wringing your hands. Every time something doesn't go your way, you got to quit freaking out. You got to say, I'm a son of God, and I'm walking in the trust of the Most High God, Amen. and no evil shall befall me. A thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand. It will not come near me. It cannot come near me, for the Lord is on my side. Amen. The Lord is my defender. Amen. Thank you. And if you think fear is not an issue in the church, I'm going to tell you fear is an incredible deterrent from the church standing and being accounted for as the sons of God in this age. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. And then uh, Psalm 34. You got to trust God as your source. Amen? Is he your source for strength? Is he your source for peace? Is he your source for wealth? Is he your source for health? Amen? Amen. I mean, we all go through different things, but I'm going to tell you the Lord says, I'll lead you in the path I want you to go. Amen? Amen. But I intend, I intend for you to trust me, and when you trust me, my spirit flows through you constantly. Amen? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, today, uh, the Arby's in Bedford gets struck by lightning, and then Mitchell's 
Arby's goes out, total, no electricity. There's always stuff. But we stand in faith. Lord, it's your deal. This is your deal in Jesus' name. And Lord, whatever is stolen, I declare restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Because if you catch a thief, you can make him pay you back sevenfold. Yeah. Amen. Amen? So, you, Amen. so you, you, know, you can't just keep backing up. You've, you've got to move forward. You've got, you can't always play defense. Amen? Yeah. You've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Yeah. You have to keep your eyes on the Lord. Because if you don't keep your eyes on the Lord, you're watching something else. Amen? Yeah. I mean, when we played football in high school, if I, more times than I could count, you, you throw to a guy, he's wide open in the flats, he's got a wide open sideline for a touchdown, he senses it, he knows it, he's going here, the ball's right here, I always threw the ball right here, it never was anywhere else. And uh, so he's going right here, and the ball comes in, but you know what, he's looking downfield, and he drops the ball. Because you because you got to watch it. you got to watch it. Keep your eyes on the ball. Played tennis for a lot of years. Every instructor I ever, had, ever went to, they'd always say this, only the ball, only the ball, only the ball. Your footwork will work out. Your, 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 everything else will work out. Only the ball, only the ball, only the ball, only the ball. Play golf now. You take your eye off the ball, it, it's a disaster. <laughs> only, only. Try making yourself watch the ball through your swing. Only watching the ball. It takes a lot of discipline. And you got to say, only the ball. I'm going to tell you, only Jesus. Only Keep your God. eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And he will enlighten you. He will enlighten you. And your days will not be burdened. Because you're not subject to any person. If you're subject to people, then you're not subject to God. Amen? You are not subject to people. You are subject to God. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Their faces glow. When you keep looking at the Lord, you cannot worry because the Lord is not worried. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen? He says, you're not going to want for it. You keep watching me, and don't let people, don't let people harass you. Don't let, don't let people, uh, you know, we were talking Wednesday night. Some people, some people hate it when people prosper. They do. And they will kind of gouge you. And you got to get over that. Say, praise God. I'm not going to apologize that I'm blessed. Amen. I'm not going to apologize because Jesus is my source. Yeah. Why should I apologize? He's the one that died for me and he rose from the dead and he's given me these things. I will not apologize for his sacrifice and his resurrection. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.